You know, a lot of times, as I look down at the notes for this program, of course, Monday through Friday, 15 minutes a day or thereabouts, and I look down at my notes and I think, how in the world am I going to fill five 15-minute sections of time with this little meager portion of a thought. That happened this week. I'm thinking, looking down here, I'm going to run through all of this by Tuesday, and then what am I going to do? And here I am, sitting here in the middle of the week, and looking at what I have left to get through to even barely communicate the main thought and theme that I was planning on discussing. And I feel like I've gotten sidetracked and chasing rabbits, but I'll be honest with you, I really feel like the application points we've made on Monday and Tuesday were led of the Lord. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I did have those thoughts in my notes, and it wasn't like I'm just reading these scriptures and extemporaneously riffing off of just something that pops into my head. I, I was really looking down at my notes, and the Lord led me that way, and now I'm looking at everything that's left thinking, goodness, I don't have enough time. And if I keep talking about not having enough time, I guess it'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy, won't it? So, let's find our way to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16, we're in verse number 6. Watch, all of my notes are going to evaporate today and I'll be left with nothing for the next couple of days. But 1 Samuel chapter number 16, while you turn there, I am leafing through a sample packet. You see, a sample packet is one each of every gospel track that we currently produce here at Bible Tracks Incorporated. And I would like to find one to talk to you about today, but for sake of time, I'm just going to talk to you about the sample packet. You can go to BibleTracksInc.org and you can order one of these today. Now, it has about 40 gospel tracks inside it, very nicely laid out and presented, gives you a lot of information about our ministry and what we do. I'm going to ask you, BibleTracksInc.org, that's our website, BibleTracksInc.org, go there and order one of these. What you do with it is you sit down and you figure out, you get alone with God, spend a few moments in prayer, and then figure out which gospel track you feel God might want you to start using. Here's a rhetorical question for you. Do you know the kind of people that use gospel tracks? What kind of people pass these things out? Well, it's the kind of people that carry gospel tracts. It's really hard to give them away if you don't have them on you. So, BibleTracksInc.org. BibleTracksInc.org. Go get our sample packet today, and we'll talk about a specific tract tomorrow. 1 Samuel chapter 16, and let's look at... Let's breeze through verses 1 through 5 just to give ourselves some context. 1 Samuel chapter number 16. Have you found your way there? Find your place there. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 1. Let's begin together. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill thine horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. He gets a little trepidatious here. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee. He kind of gives him an excuse. And say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. This is Samuel's cover story. And call Jesse, this is the Lord continuing to command Samuel, and call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And that brings us to verse number six. And it came to pass when they were come that he, that's Samuel, looked on Eliab. That's Jesse's, I believe, firstborn son. He looked on Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Now, before we really dive deep into this, as we get into the real meat of the thought, of course, the main theme for this week is this. We haven't even touched it yet, but we're going to begin today. You need to think 
big. We are full of people with, we, we are, our churches are full of people with their heads in the sand that don't want to do more for the cause of Christ. They're really looking for excuses to do less. We need to think big. We need to act big. Now, let me bring some balance. We need to think big. We need to act big under the auspices of the Holy Ghost with the power of God on our lives. We're not just going off cavalier like bandits doing everything we want to do. No, we need to do it inside the bounds of God's book and his leading. But we get to this portion of scripture, verse number six. Samuel looks on Eliab, probably a strapping young man, good-looking young man, But, as we'll find out in verse number 7, not the man that God was looking for. Can I say this? People that God uses to think big are, most often, not always the mighty in man's opinion. We live in somewhat of a celebrity culture, don't we? where those with the fame and the looks and the money get all the adulation and they're constantly adored and told how great they are. Can I tell you, can I echo what verse number seven is about to tell us? God doesn't look on the outward appearance. The Lord looks on the heart. Look at verse number seven with me. First Samuel chapter 16, verse seven. The Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. That sounds a little harsh, doesn't it? It's almost a rejection of Eliab, not because of his appearance. He was not rejected because he was too good looking, not because he was a tall, strapping young man. No, no, the Bible continues, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but... The Lord looketh on the heart. God looks on the heart. Now, for sake of time, we won't turn there, but the Bible talks about itself being a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's really amazing to me that sometimes we trust the uh, mainstream idea, the thought that we should just trust our heart. That's what the love stories of modern day tell us. That's what the movies of our time tell us, that you just need to follow your heart. Well, God looks on the heart and he says it's deceitfully wicked. If you would... Look at verse number seven one more time with me, and then we're going to dive headlong, and we're going to confront some people that are listening right now, that have their ears tuned into this broadcast, that think they don't even have, they don't possess the ability to even consider thinking big. Verse number seven, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for the man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Why do we have so many people dissatisfied with the way they look today? Say, that's a hot potato. That's a loaded question. Why is it that we have such a need and why is the market for plastic surgery so incredibly high? Now, I understand that I may be kicking over a hornet's nest today and that is not my norm and it's not and it's never really been my intent on this radio broadcast. That's not where I'm trying to go. But I know, I'm sure, I am certain of this fact that there are some listening to the sound of my voice right now that need to hear this fact. You, I'm talking to you, you, yes, yes, you in the back, the one that thinks I'm not talking to them, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's a promise from God. Would you consider that for just a moment? God made you and he's never made a mistake and he didn't start with you 
wrap your mind around that. Seriously, I, I, I'm not getting off of this until you get it. God made you just the way you are. He's never made a mistake, and he did not start his career of making mistakes with you, contrary to what other people have told you, contrary to what you think when you look at yourself in the mirror, contrary to what your mom or your dad may have insinuated in, in a foolish moment with loose lips, contrary to what the world tells you perfection needs to look like. God made you the way you are, and you are in his eyes fearfully and wonderfully made. And I'd like you to wrap your mind around that. There's another verse that says, we are his workmanship. Have you ever had the opportunity to maybe work with your hands on a project? I enjoy, I'm not great at it, but I enjoyed the few times that my dad and I got to work on carpentry type projects together, or even not so much carpentry, but just building things, putting a deck together, or maybe fixing a chair or something like that. And I remember the sense of pride that I would get when it was completed. When we put that last bit of stain on that chair to complete, to, to kind of renovate, to make that chair beautiful. And I th remember thinking, I had a hand in making that. And I, I honestly, as a small boy, I did my best, tried to make it as nice as possible, made every cut precise, every screw w w w was put in with love and with care, tried not to split the wood, make everything right. And I'd look at that thing and say, man, oh man, that's awesome. Do you realize that that's the exact same sensation, the feeling that God has when he looks at you? He doesn't think, oh, good night. I messed up. Maybe the next one will be a little better. Maybe that, that was an early edition. That, that was a 1.0 release. So just wait for the 2.0. It'll be a lot better. No, 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 friend. You were made by him. He made you just the way you are. Why is it that we can't think big? I think a lot of times it's because we occupy our thoughts so much and we think so little of ourselves. Now, we're going to get into this a little more deeply tomorrow and we're going to provide some more context. This is not a health, wealth, and prosperity and a change your mindset, change your world type of message. No, no. We just need to realize God made you. God loves you. And we need to realize that if we're ever going to think big, we're going to have to get past some of our hangups. And I, I don't, I'm not diminishing, I'm not downplaying them. We need to get past some of those things that have been tripping us up for far too long. Join us tomorrow. Have a great day. Seriously, have a great day for his glory. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.